Our second speaker is Dr. Christopher White. Uh, Dr. White is an economic geographer and associate professor at KeyMap University. For almost two decades, he has worked extensively on human geography and human environment interrelationships across the region, and more recently, the Aral Sea, the Aral Sea Crisis, regional economies of the Aral Sea Basin, and regional nature society linkages. Dr. White's presentation is China, Kazakhstan, and a transboundary wildlife resource, the case of Panthera Unkia. Unkia? I hope. Should we check that one? Well, Jessica, thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, just want to make sure I do. Well, thank you, Jessica, for the, that kind introduction. Um, full disclosure, I'm having some issues with my eyesight, so if I'm if I'm squinting, uh, that that explains well a few things at least. Uh, but also, uh, of course, Dr. Turner, thank you for your presentation. I will say that uh, you've set a rather high bar uh, for the second presenter. Uh, but anyway. Uh, I want to thank the KeyMaps China and Central Asia Studies Center for, for inviting me to speak today. Uh, I've had a, uh, been very happy to meet uh, some of my American uh, new acquaintances uh, and others who I've known in, uh, in the past as we've studied and worked on environmental issues here in Central Asia uh, together in the past. Um, so, as we look at uh, these official state documents, incidentally, uh, can we go back one, please? Thank you. Uh, as we look at these official state documents, now a lot of us might think of these as, as, as postage stamps. Uh, but I consider these to be official state documents that taken on, on the whole, uh, we don't need to necessarily get into this, but create this, this visual narrative that a state is trying to portray. Okay, now, uh, as we look at these two official, excuse me, four official state documents from, from Kazakhstan and from China, okay, let me just say a few things. When we think of China, when we think of Kazakhstan, and we think of transboundary uh, flows, transboundary leakages, transboundary connections, uh, we're likely to conjure up a number of different things, perhaps, bilateral trade flows, uh, flows of foreign direct investment, of course, Belt and Road Initiative, um, construction projects, we might think of, say, migration, of course, uh, dare I say COVID, oil, pipelines, tourism. And if we were to turn to the environment, environmental issues, we might think of, say, uh, perhaps our first thoughts might be on climate change. Of course, uh, between Kazakhstan and China, we would, we, would, we would probably think of transboundary water issues with respect to the Iritish and Nili River systems. But we may not necessarily go to wildlife. And I'm thinking we may not uh, settle on, on the snow level. So what I'm going to do here today uh, well, I am going to the snow leopard today, obviously. Um, the elusive denizens of the high mountain ecosystems of central Eurasia, okay, the snow leopard. All right, so when I'm thinking transboundary 
flows in this context. I'm thinking, of course, of the, of the snow leopards themselves. A uh, point was made earlier. Uh, obviously, the snow leopards are not cognizant of the political boundaries there. Uh, the snow leopard habitat, of course, crossing the boundary. Uh, the snow leopard, we would also have to include, think about the snow leopard uh, prey species, uh, the mountain goats and the mountain sheep, even down to as small as rabbits and, and marmots, uh, the entire ecosystem in which the snow leopard is uh, what we call a keystone species. Uh, of course, cross-border harmonization of conservation efforts. This is important. Uh, and also, of course, the, uh, well, one of the threats to snow leopards, of course, is the illegal, illegal, we'll say, poaching uh, for, for both pelts and body parts. And the body parts, um, of course, bound for China as uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, snow leopard body parts uh, are used. So, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, now, uh, I'm gonna start with the, with the piece that I'm most familiar with. Well, Jeff, thank you. Uh, with the piece that I'm most familiar with, um, I suppose partly because, yeah, thank you, about which, excuse me, I'm sorry. Which, which? This one's good. This one's good. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry. Uh, anyway, so my piece, um, I guess, we'll start with, uh, and one of the things that I, when I first moved here, uh, I became fascinated with, with snow leopards. Um, before I moved here, we do not have snow leopards outside of zoos, of course, in the United States. Um, but I became fascinated with, with this, this non-human animal who is this, which is, of course, this very important symbol for us here in Kazakhstan. But at any rate, uh, Kazakhstan is in this fascinating situation here um, with respect to snow leopards because uh, it's this omnipresent, uh, omnipresent cultural symbol here, okay? Uh, and yet, in the wild, okay, our, 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 saying our, and here in Kazakhstan, our snow leopard population totals, uh, well, as we'll see in a table here, only, exceed only Russia and Uzbekistan. Um, so we're near the bottom in terms of our numbers of snow leopards in the wild. Uh, this other piece here, uh, the Riordan and she, uh, by the way, the book in which this comes from, this chapter, uh, is an incredible resource, and I love this notion of conservation from sort of at the, at the molecular level from genes. And again, it's snow leopards from, from, from genes to landscapes, which is, which I, as I think is an, is, is an interesting concept. But this piece shows, in, in, uh, among other things, China's snow leopard presence Okay, to be kind of the opposite of Kazakhstan, where China has by far the greatest number of snow leopards in the world, by far the greatest amount of, of snow leopard habitat in the world, and yet, as a cultural symbol, uh, it's not really there. And in fact, they even use this term to refer to snow leopards in China as, as cultural insignificance of snow leopards, which is kind of the, kind of the opposite of the situation here in Kazakhstan. Okay, the third piece we'll get to, uh, oh boy, border security fencing and wildlife. Um, so there's been, so the authors identify a kind of a, a confounding coincidence of, of a couple of things. First, there a recent increase in border fence construction in Eurasia. Comes at a time uh, of, perhaps ironically, an increasing recognition of the importance of transboundary cooperation with respect to conservation. Uh, fences, barriers, and other linear infrastructure uh, cause wildlife mortality, interrupt movements and migrations, of course, uh, and alter home range territory. Now, there's an excellent graphic on this piece that I want to 
uh, talk a little bit about later and show you. Uh, let's see. So she and other okay, she and the others uh, conservation hotspots in China. A number, a number of them, of course, included snow leopards. And China has the longest international land border in the world, uh, and is among the world's most biodiverse states. Now, the interesting piece to this article, I thought, was was some some impacts of the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, being, of course, well, linear infrastructure, disrupting ecosystems, promotion of development in habitats, uh, and an influx of human population and heightened human wildlife conflict. And then finally, uh, linking this to climate change, uh, there was, okay, linking snow leopards and snow leopard habitat to climate change impacts. All right. Um, they they use a range-wide model of expected climate shifts, 2050 and 2070, where the snow leopards are expected to be forced to migrate the upper elevations and a little bit habit range-wise, a little bit northwest. Okay. Okay. Now, part of the reason why I wanted to talk today on snow leopards is to share with you a couple of my images. Uh, and on both of these, we'll see two snow, I'll, I'll introduce you to two snow leopards today. The first is pirate. Um, I made this image in, in 2013. Uh, pirate is one of two, uh, uh, one of two snow leopards at the Almaty Zoo. Again, this is back in 2013. Uh, one of two snow leopard brothers who were orphaned as kittens in Kyrgyzstan and, speaking of transboundary flows, uh, came to Kazakhstan in the Almaty Zoo all right, for eye surgery. Uh, the specifics of which I could get into later, we can kind of see some of the remnants of, of pirates uh, after his eye surgery. Uh, <clears throat> we will see Pirate's brother at the end. Okay, Pirate's brother was named Leader. Sadly, both of these snow leopards died uh, at the zoo, at the Almaty Zoo of Neglect uh, around 2015, 2016. So I wanted, to, I wanted to present on snow leopards again today, one, just as an excuse to show my photos of these guys, uh, and perhaps in some small way to keep their, uh, to keep their memory alive. Okay, so those of us from Almaty, of course, uh, or even those visiting, see snow leopard symbolism and representations every day. Uh, and I found this map, I actually found just found this map in my office uh, and of course wanted to show it. We've got three different snow leopards on this map. Of course, the official seal for the city of Almaty, which I have to say has got to be of all the official seals that I've seen of any of the cities that includes any in the United States. Uh, I'd have to say this is my favorite. Uh, and of course, the mascot of the 2011 Asian Winter Games, as of course, is Eaterby. Uh, and we can't, may not see it quite as clearly, but the Golden Man, this is our, of course, our independence monument here in Almaty. The Golden Man sits, stands, I should say, atop a winged uh, snow leopard. So now we'll get it. We'll get to see uh, a map, of course, of snow leopard habitat and snow, le snow leopard range. So one of the first things we'll notice, of course, is that it is very much, and in fact, snow leopard habitat and the snow leopards themselves, of course, are very much transboundary. In fact, their habitat is, in fact, transboundary. Um, not surprising, given the fact that, that sort of mountain ranges have historically been political, 
political boundaries, or at least the basis for them. Um, but certainly, we can see clearly that we're talking about a transboundary habitat, okay? And, and we have 12, 12 border, uh, excuse me, 12 range states. And one of the in interesting things, of course, uh, relevant to this particular talk, anytime we're talking about China, uh, China borders every other range state. Now, there are 12, with one exception. And that one exception is, is Uzbekistan. The China borders all of the others, uh, each of the other states, that uh, each of the other range states. Well, let's, we saw a map. Now let's turn to some numbers. Uh, interesting, again, as I said, Kazakhstan, and, and by the way, right now I just want to look at two states, Kazakhstan and China. Uh, as I said, our population numbers are really kind of at the low end really that exceed that of only uh, Uzbekistan and Russia, as we see. Uh, but certainly, China. All right, we can see clearly, this is, this is estimated number of total population of snow leopards. Um, clearly, by far, China has more than any other range state, uh, and also, and, and we can see the habitat as well. So, with that, clearly then, if we're talking, if we're talking about snow leopards, we, we must talk about, we must talk about China. Obviously, greatest number of le snow leopards, greatest amount of habitat by far shares the international boundary with each of the other range states, with the exception of Uzbekistan. Uh, any transboundary conservation efforts must include China. Uh, and poaching in for pelts, snow leopard body parts for traditional Chinese medicine, that remains a major threat to, to snow leopards. So the point, of course, China's important for snow leopard <laughs> conservation. Okay. Now, this is the, just to, just to illustrate, you know, thinking of, 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 of orders and boundaries as barriers. Um, personally, I would kind of like to flip that more to boundaries as, say, you know, as more of a, of a nexus or connection, but that's, maybe a discussion for another time. This visual, I believe, is, is fantastic. Um, what we're looking at, of course, is the Mongolian-China border, uh, where, again, this was the article they're talking about, an increase in fencing, border fence construction. And yes, it's showing another wildlife species, uh, the Kuland, uh, but, but the in principle, this remains the same. And I would argue that for snow leopards, this is even uh, more dramatic because snow leopards uh, are very solitary, not want, they want to avoid not only other snow leopards most of the time, and uh, certainly any human presence. So the Kulan, okay, GPS locations are clearly showing the impact of, of fencing, but I also also, of course, not just, not just fencing barriers, but also other linear infrastructure we can see. Uh, this was the, yeah, the Ulaanbaatar Beijing Railway, okay, where Kulan is and are avoiding that. All right, so uh, this is impacting the Kulan's range. This is a stark reminder of what such infrastructure does and remembering this as we consider the large scale Construction of the Belt and Road Initiative. Okay. Oh no. Okay. All right. Now, uh, here is Pirate's brother, Leader. Uh, and I, I've got to say, for that for that piece that I showed you earlier that I worked on, that I did, um, I spent a lot of time photographing the snow leopards at our, at our zoo. Again, this was back in 2013. Um, it just so happens to be, it just so happens that this is one of my favorite 
images uh, of any of those that I've made. For my Snow Leopard paper, I spent a lot of time watching and observing these guys, uh, and watching and observing these guys, and waiting, and making images, and waiting some more. If anybody uh, knows cats, <laughs> it took a long time to get, it took a long time for me to get them uh, doing, doing much of anything. But at any rate, making lots and lots of photographs with these guys. So, to conclude, we might not immediately think of snow leopards when we consider Kazakhstan, China, transboundary flows. Uh, transboundary conservation efforts are necessary for this animal, non-human animal, uh, that inhabits and crosses the Kazakhstan-China frontier. It's important for us to factor in environmental concerns in general and endangered, technically, let's say, vulnerable right now, uh, wildlife species, in particular, vis-a-vis -vis Belt and Road Initiative construction projects uh, and other infrastructure development. Transboundary conservation efforts, I hope, will ensure the survival of this, uh, this, this majestic and vulnerable animal. Snow Leopard. Thank you very much, and I welcome any questions any of you may have. Yes, and I can't see, but I can hear. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now this is a great this is a great question about how do we know how do we know how many there are? First of all, yes. Well, Mariam, you're you're making a very good point uh, that I, for the sake of time, wasn't going to make. But I do not even like this idea of. Uh, you know, having a state in, as if it's this box that has this many snow leopards, because it's uh, this idea of, well, how do we know how many are in each? This is a great question. And the, the, quick, the quick answer is we don't. All right, now I say that because uh, as one of the things that you'll notice is the range. Range estimates are all over the place. Um, some of the range estimates are even just based on, well, this is how much habitat we have. And uh, based on this average density that we believe is there, then we apply that density to the, to the habitat. So now this is increasingly today, um, they're, they're, they're doing a lot of, uh, well, they call it camera trapping. So they'll set up remote cameras um, that, that, the, that the cats, the, the snow leopards set off remotely, that's, that's a big development in, in terms of trying to estimate Is that me? No. Uh, snow leopards and where they are. Um, so the quick answer is nobody really knows. And part of the, part of the problem is that these, that snow leopards are inhabiting some of the most inhospitable places on Earth. Um, another interesting fact, the first, the first photograph that came to us from, I mean, the first photograph of, of a snow leopard uh, wasn't made until 1980. Now, <laughs> for me, that's incredible. I mean, that's, that's in my lifetime. Uh, so I think that's pretty incredible that, that a photograph was never recorded of a snow leopard. And it just illustrates partly how elusive, uh, how elusive they are. Um, so, Mariam, I'm sorry, did that even an remotely answer your question? 
And did everyone see the snow leopard on my coffee? Oh, animal, great. Um, because it made me think of how China has used panda diplomacy and yes. it often you know, presents itself through this image of this other animal. Um, and I was just wondering if you had any insight as to why uh, the you know, government of Kazakhstan might actively choose to portray itself with this animal, um, even though it's not as significant in population here, and why, uh, on the other, on the okay. other hand, why, why China might or why Chinese people might yeah, okay. identify well, as much with that. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Thank you. I, uh, let's see, for, for China, of course, um, they, I think they have a lot, China as, you know, as uh, this very, very biodiverse uh, state, uh, I suspect they have more to choose from. I mean, they've got, I mean, pandas for crying out loud. Um, and other, even, even tiger, you know, the whole. Now, for Kazakhstan, what do we? Uh, well, we've got snow leopards. Some, someone once suggested at a, at, a, um, at a conference I was at, suggested, hey, why don't, why don't we have saiga? I don't know, the saiga antelope, of course. Uh, but but <laughs> not, not everyone knows the saiga. Of course, uh, but anyway. So I think on one hand, for Kazakhstan, we we might not have as many options for for wildlife symbols. One and two, I think uh, the snow leopard status as a symbol kind of was cemented back in, I believe it was in 1997. Uh, the first president of Kazakhstan, Nazarbayev, uh, of course, with the 2030 2030 initiative. Uh, speaking of state level plans and dates, uh, he used he used the snow leopard as this as this symbol for Kazakhstan 2030, uh, which we saw. Those of us who remember back then, uh, we saw snow leopard imagery everywhere um, as a result of this of Kazakhstan 2030. Um, but but as far as as uh, China goes, yeah, I would say they've got some more, how should we say, internationally recognized possibilities, like the panda. That's just kind of a guess. Any, anybody else? Any questions? Larissa? Yes. Uh, so recently, uh, I believe that there is a special program between um, Central Asian countries Counting and preserving the habitat, and there are a lot of these uh, photo cameras yeah. uh, for capturing. And recently, I think it's even this year or last year, we had uh, a uh, huge news, news that the snow leopard was uh, seen on Chimburg, really close to during, the During, yes. Uh, was this during the pandemic? Or no? No, I think okay. it was like uh, on the screen or something yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. all right. Okay, well, Larissa, this is, uh, thank you for this question. Now, I hope it's that the numbers, the population numbers of snow leopards are increasing. Now, 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 but I don't know that for sure, of course. But, uh, but you make this very important point about human habitat and snow leopard habitat and really at the margins of each, okay, where we, see, we start to see overlap. One of the major threats, not so much here in Amati, but elsewhere in the Snow Leopards range, uh, certainly in Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Pakistan, 
India, Afghanistan, um, herders who are, again, op occupying some of the most marginal areas of human existence, right? Where they are overlapping with snow leopard territory, of course, and the snow leopards and their herders, and so they've herded their livestock, uh, very often not with any very high fencing, just with, with rocks. And the snow leopards, of course, can, I mean, this is a, would be a feeding frenzy for a snow leopard. Um, so why specifically here in, here in the Almaty area? I, again, I hope it's because we've, we're seeing an increase in numbers. Um, one of the, I saw some footage during the pandemic of, of snow leopards in some of these places that, whoa, wait, that can't be. But, but mainly because the humans, humans were locked in their homes down in the city. Um, in <laughs> well, so, so, uh, and, uh, and so the snow leopards, and again, they, they, they avoid people. Um, there's never been a recorded attack on humans. And so, uh, you know, with, with the retreat, we could say even retreat of humans, the snow leopards sort of inch their way further south, uh, uh, lower elevation, I could say. He's quieter. Yeah, quieter. So was I okay on time? Yes, Great, thank actually, you. Yes. Maybe you could discuss that in the okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you much. So much.